All right. Good morning, everyone. Could we all please stand as we go ahead and do our morning pledges? We're ready. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. To the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again. To the American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have the children up, please? Y'all need a microphone or anything? Amen. I'll ask the choir if they will to come on up, please.
Alex. Amen. Well, don't we have a good, sweet spirit here this morning? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what. You know, just because we're getting ready to have prayer, this altar is always open at any time that you have a need or you want somebody to pray for you, please come. You know, somebody will be there to help you pray, and even God himself will show up too for you. So he'll be right there with you. Amen. All right, we've got a several people we need to pray for as well. Uh, let's continue to remember Melinda and Jim this morning. His surgery went well, so we're happy that uh, the Lord intervened there. So, so thankful there. Uh, anybody have a special prayer request that you would like to make known before we go to the Lord in prayer? Yes, she did. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God, too, for the sweet spirit that we had in Sunday school. We had quite a few good testimonies this morning, what God has actually done in their lives, and I thank God for that. You know, a lot of us wouldn't be here today because God has worked a miracle in your life. Amen. Amen. At one time or another, he has. So, anybody else? Amen. 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 Thank God for that. Yes. Anyone else? Remember? Amen. Amen. We've got a lot of things that goes on in these schools today, too. We also want to pray for all the young people. Uh, I know that it's requested quite often, but these children have a lot to go through. So we certainly want to pray. Brother? Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Anyone else want to praise the Lord this morning? Yes. Let's pray for that, yes. Amen. Anyone else, please? All right, those that have an unspoken request, let's all come into the altar, please, and let's take it before the Lord. God. 
Amen. May I have the men up for the morning offering, please? Brother Jeff, I'll ask you to give the blessing, please. Hey man, we still have a few announcements. Uh, the upcoming on uh, September the 10th, uh, the church will be visiting L the La Follette Nursing Home at 2 o'clock. Uh, we'll be singing and they'll be preaching on that day. Also, the following week on September the 17th uh, will be our homecoming. So invite as many people as you can for that. Uh, and we're still looking for more sodas. I noticed that we got quite a few, but we never have enough sodas for a homecoming. So just keep on bringing them as much as you can, when you can. Uh, also, on October the 8th, the Christian uh, Motorcycle Association will be visiting on that morning. So we're certainly looking forward to that. And also the following week on October the 15th will be the Larry Burge Singers will be uh, with our service that day. So... With that said, that's all of our announcements. Do we have anybody that has a song that they'd like to sing this morning? Brother Dan. It is an honor and a privilege to be here this morning. Amen. This Right here is my happy place. I look forward all week to be able to stand here and sing God's praises. Amen. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's lab and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. Discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus wept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of His grace, 
resting neath his sheltering wing, always looking on his smiling face. That is why I shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, Trials fall across my way, though sometimes the path seems rough and steep. See his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me. Far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go So glad to be here. I've been on the underway for the last couple of weeks. And I've got tests coming up. I need your prayers. But as long as I can stand and say a whisper, I won't do it. My home may not look like a castle, and my clothes. May be lacking in style, and if you should sit at my table, a maker supply you my pine. But oh, it's not what you see that makes me a king. Makes me a king to me of everything, all that I need, all that I need, my treasures unseen. God made a world filled with beauty of the things we enjoy every day. My secret to hidden possessions is to love Him and serve Him His way. But oh, it's not what you see that makes me a king, makes me a king to me of everything, all that I need, all that I need, my treasures unseen. I got to sing late song. There's a country where I'm going. There 
there are mansions standing tall. Hear their troubles and tribulations, but he will take me through it all. Through it all, he will take me, for I may stumble and I may fall, but he loves me, he'll not forsake me, for he will take me through it all. When I'm burdened and broken hearted, I think of that morning when he will call all my troubles will be beyond for he will take me through it all. Through it all, he will take me, for I may stumble and I may fall, but he loves me, he'll not forsake me, for he will take me through it all. Folks, it's a blessing to know that I've got a family that loves the Lord just as much as I do. Not only the church family, but, you know, to know and to be able to sit and watch them and sing the glory of God and to feel his presence in my heart. Mm. And not only that, they share it with you. You know, they share that love that they have for God with you. If you sit and watch her struggle every day and the want to be here, I mean, it's so hard for her to get here, but God made a way for her once again today. I thank God for that. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Bobby if there's nobody else has a song. Do you have a song, Brother? Anybody else have a song? All right, Brother Bobby. Well, it was looking iffy if I was going to preach, wasn't it? <laughs> Amen. I read in the Bible that uh, the Apostle Paul and John the Revelator both had an out-of-body experience. I had mine this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Hey, Amen. Yeah, that's a... Uh... Huh? No, I said, Thank you. Josh gave me the out-of-body experience. I know who you are. I'm just 66. Any, any more people say Bobby and then it's bless his heart. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Alex, for bringing the water. Thank you, Josh, for the out-of-body experience. Good. Is all that cleared up? Amen. Thank you. John 3.16 in your Bibles this morning. Amen. Yes. I say it, but I'll say it again. I think God's people will be the happiest people in this world. Amen. This is one of the most recited and quoted yes. verses in the entire Bible. John chapter 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Fathers, we bow before the throne of grace, Lord, thanking you so much for everything that's been done for your honor and glory, the songs of praise, God, for the choir singing, the testimonies, the praise reports, the prayer requests, Lord, for those who chose to come out to be at your house this morning. Lord, we pray that you'll search every heart that's here this day, God, that you'll answer everyone's need according to your perfect will in their life. We pray for the power of God upon the message, for the words to say, the discernment of the scriptures. And Lord, we pray that you'll just be here in a great and a mighty way. We'll be so very careful to give you all of the praise, the honor, the glory for it all. In Christ Jesus' precious holy name we do pray. 
And amen. amen. And while it's on my mind, because sometimes my mind's got a mind of its own, appreciate Alex leading the choir this morning. What a great job that he did. John chapter 3, verse number 16. For God, if you look, for God is the source of our salvation. For God, nothing is possible if it wasn't for God. For God, there be without Him, there'd be no heaven, no earth, no us. There'd be no salvation. There'd be no chance of any of us ever going to heaven. But thank God who is the creator of heaven, earth, and mankind. Look down one day upon the Garden of Eden. And just when the devil thought he had given his best shot and God's creation in his likeness and his image had sinned against God, had fallen from the grace of Almighty God, and the devil said, I've got it, Lord, what are you going to do next? You're out of options. I mean, the earth is still yours, heaven is still yours, but I've got Adam and Eve. I've got what you breathe, the breath of life, and you're, you created in your likeness and image. And God said, oh, no, you do not. He made a promise before He cast and banished Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. He said, this ain't over. I've got a plan. Adam and Eve are still mine. And throughout the expanse of time and throughout all the different uh, generations, God still had a plan. And His plan was wrapped up entirely in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God said, it says, for God. God says, I created them. They belong to me. I will buy them back. Adam and Eve are still His. God hates sin, does He not? But thank God He loves the sinner. God said, I have got a plan. They're my children. The devil can't have them. I will buy them back. But here's what I want to get across to you. Does the Bible not tell us at least two different times it happened more than that, that God spoke out of heaven concerning the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, that is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Has He ever spoke out of heaven and told anybody, hey, that's Bobby. That's my beloved son in who I am well pleased. There's nothing I can do to please God except what I can do through the Lord Jesus Christ. He looked at me one day and let me just get ahead of myself and then I'll circle back around. I just said, for God so loved the world. I need to change that for just a moment if I could. You see, it's for God so loved Bobby. And where I put my name, put your name in there. They see God for God so loved Bobby that He gave His own son. And you can say, God loved you more than He loved His own Son, Jesus Christ. Do you realize that? God always had Him. He's always been. There's never a time in eternity, past, present, or future, that God's Son was not with Him. It's always been Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That God has loved us enough that He gave His only begotten Son. God didn't have another Son to give. God didn't have a, a, a several of them to choose from. He has one begotten Son. He said, that is my beloved. His name is Jesus Christ. But here's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. is that God looked down and He loved us to the point, church, is that He loved us more than He did the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I know that to be true? God handed His Son over to the hands of sinners, did He not? God sent His Son to be crucified. God sent His Son to suffer. God sent His Son to die. He loved Jesus more than He... He loved Jesus more than anything except for you and for me. Do you hear me this morning? It's that Jesus 
Jesus did nothing wrong. Jesus never sinned. Jesus never disappointed His Father. But yet He sent His Son to be turned over to the hands of sinners, to the hands of the Romans, to the hands and to the wrath of the devil. You want to know how much God loves you this morning? He gave His only begotten Son so that you and I would not have to go to hell, that we could live with Him in heaven. Amen. But the Bible says that He gave His only begotten Son. You see, there's always been. And the God witnessed something. It was the first ever birth in heaven. You know that day God looked around and He said, I have got a plan. He looked at His Son who was always in heaven. He said, Son, I'm going to send you to die. Why in this world would it take the Lord Jesus Christ? Because God loved us to the point that He wanted our sin debt paid until it was white as snow. It was as if it never existed. And God said they ain't but one sacrifice. His name is Jesus. He is my Son. There's no sacrifice good enough to pay the debt that they owe. He goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And He looks, He said, they have committed sin after sin after sin after sin. And the only sacrifice good enough to pay that debt in full is you. But Father, I'm a spirit. I absolutely can't die. I don't know you want to sacrifice. And God said, you're going to have to go. And God looked throughout Israel and He found one virgin. Her name was Mary. And God said, she's got the purest heart of anybody in Israel. She's the mother that I'm looking for for my son. She's the one that I know will love Him unconditionally. And not only that, but she had to love God the Father as much as she loved that baby that God would supernaturally naturally placed into her womb. Do you understand? Is that before we can, we can even love the Son? Do you understand, church? we got to love the Father. Amen. And God's loved us before we ever met Him, before we ever loved Him. So God sent His only begotten Son. How much does God love us? He looked at that boy that had never done anything wrong. He looked at that boy that said, that's my beloved Son in who I am well pleased. And he looked at him and he knew exactly what he must suffer on the cross. How much does God love us this morning? He sent His only begotten Son. I want to make sure you get a hold of that this morning. God loved Jesus, did He not? But He loved us way more than He ever loved Jesus because He allowed His Son to do something. We were always already born sinners, were we not? Were we not already born sinners? Does, does the Bible not say that our righteousness is as filthy rags before holy God? Jesus never committed a sin, but yet He sent His Son knowing that He would suffer more than anyone else, though He'd done nothing wrong. He sent His Son even though He knew that He would become sin, even though He had never sinned. He sent His Son that He would go to the cross and shed His blood and lay His life down. And we all rejoice about the third day. We rejoice about the resurrection. But church, you got to get to the third day before you can celebrate the third day. You've got to die before you can resurrect. You've got to shed the blood before there's any forgiveness. You've got to give your life before you can raise it up again. You've got to go to the cross before you can go to the grave and before you can go to heaven. Do you understand the price that He paid for you and me this morning? God sent His Son. He spoke out of heaven as I said. That's my beloved Son in who I am well pleased. But yet He looked at us. Do we deserve salvation? No, we not. Did we earn the salvation? It was a free gift of God, lest any man should ever boast about it. How much does God love a sinner? How much does God love us? And though, even though He looked throughout the eternity of time down here, and man's mind was on wickedness all the time, was it not? Is this world getting any better? It is not. 
Can we ever live good enough to get to heaven? No, we cannot. How much did God love us? He took His only Son that had never committed a sin, that had never done anything wrong, that never had one bad thought in His head. He said, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to take all the sins that there is, and you're going to have to forgive them on the cross of Calvary. How much does God love us? That much. But notice this. It ain't like God was empty handed in heaven, was it? He had all the angels, did He not? He already had Jesus, didn't He? It wasn't like God didn't have a family. He has a son. He has all the faithful angels that He ever created, two-thirds of them. But there's something about you and me that there was a void in the heart of Almighty God. And He said, I can't be satisfied. I can't be fulfilled. I can't have peace here in heaven until I look and they come home. Because we had a God that said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We had a God that says, I will be their God and they will be my people. We had a God that says, I've got a plan. I'm sticking with it. There's something about when He kneeled in the Garden of Eden and gathered the dust, then He gave the greatest gift up until that time that He ever gave. And that gift He brought from heaven, He breathed the breath of life into Adam, and then even they became living souls. God said, I did for them what I didn't for anybody else. Isn't it amazing how much God can love us? Are we worth it? Absolutely not. But are we worth it in the mind of Almighty God? Every single one of us is because God didn't die for two or three. He didn't select this one or that one. It's a whosoever will gospel. God loved all of us the same. And you just call upon His name. I'm telling you, God died for you. Amen. God loved us this because He already had Jesus, did He not? Didn't he say, I've always, even, didn't he even say in the Gospels, Father, I know that I, you've always had me. Father, I know that you always hear me. But Lord, look down here. Did we deserve it? Did we earn it? Absolutely not. I cannot tell you one thing that makes us worth the price that God paid for us. We are a disappointment. We let Him down every single day. He gives us chance after chance, opportunity after opportunity, but we just give Him what's left of our life. We put our own interest in first, and whatever we have time for, that's what God gets. And all the while, did He not give us His best? The best heaven ever had to offer was wrapped up in His only begotten Son, and thank God His name is Jesus. So we understand He already had Jesus, but He wanted us. But you see, God couldn't take us just like we are. God had to send us through a process. And He's saying, I know what went wrong. You see, whenever Adam and Eve sinned against God, they brought a sinful nature. We're born with it, are we not? Notice when he says, for God so loved the world. I'll need to clarify it right quick before I get back to preaching. God don't care about the waterfalls and the trees and the flowers. God don't care about the animals. God don't care about the creations. God don't care about the stars and the sun and the moon. But somehow or another, and I don't know why he does, I don't know why we're so important to God, I don't know why he's willing to do what he did for you and for me, but but I want you to understand something is that when God looks down he said I want you to know he said when I look down and I see Bobby hey God he doesn't see my sinful nature when God looks down and he sees me church he doesn't look down and he doesn't look at the sins he doesn't look at my past he doesn't look at my mistakes he doesn't look at my failures he doesn't look at the fact that I don't always put him first hey church I want you to understand this morning is that when God 
God looks down. He looks down at the time. Is that when we are on our road to Damascus? Is that when His Son, He stands in front of us and He said, now you've got to make a decision. It's when He sees us and Jesus is standing in front of our hearts. He's saying, just a minute. He's saying, it's time. He said, it's conviction. He said, I'm here to save you. If you'll just invite me in, I'll clean you up. I'll save your soul. I'll pay the debt. Let me tell you something, church. Bless God. He said, when my, he said, when I look at Bobby and I look at the rest of you, he said, I don't see you who you were before my son met you on your road to Damascus. I see who you are after you got saved. Thank God when God looks at us, he sees me in my new body. He sees me up in heaven. He sees me walking the streets of gold. He doesn't see who I once was. He sees who I am in Jesus. Amen. Woo, glory. When God looks at me, because you understand something, when God sees Bobby, He doesn't see who I was. He sees, he sees who I am in Jesus. Because by the time God looks down and He sees me talking with His Son, my sins have done been forgiven because every sin I have committed, every sin I will commit. And Jesus already became that sin. He forgave that sin. He shed His blood on the cross. That sin's done been covered in the blood. My sins are in the sea of forgetfulness. It's like I've never sinned. Bless God, when God looks at me, He sees me as His Son. Amen. Woo! Glory. God said, so love the world. God said, let me just personalize that. God said, I so loved Bobby. And I so loved Jeff. And I so loved Landon. And I so loved Hazel. And I so loved Kathy. And God looks it down and He says, I'll not miss a one of you. Your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. God's got the roll called down. And He looks at that. He doesn't look at what I've been forgiven for. How many in this church knows when it's been forgiven, it is forgotten. You need to listen to me this morning. Quit dragging your past failures and sins into the house of God. Quit dragging them around in your memory. Quit dragging them around like they're attached to you. If you've been forgiven, it's been forgotten you need to let go of that thing and just come in because who God sees He sees you that after you've been forgiven He's seen you after you've met His Son He sees you after it's been washed away God forgave everything that we're ever going to do do you understand when God looks down and He looks at this world He looks past the wickedness He looks past the sinfulness He looks past the failures of this world what God sees from heaven is a filter through the blood that His Son shed on the cross of Calvary. God sees His children. Amen. Amen. So you understand when God looked down at this world, I'm just going to tell you this world was condemned beyond repair. Do you hear me this morning? God looks down. Does the Bible not say in Genesis that God looked down and He looked at the world at that time and He looked and saw that man's mind was on wickedness continually? Do you remember that? God looked past all that and He found one man named Noah. He said, that man's got grace. I can look at the world and that is all I see or I can look at the one man in this world that found grace in his heart. I can look at that man and his three boys, his three daughter-in-laws. I can look at that man's wife. He said, I can look around and if all I see is wickedness and sinfulness and people's mind are not on me anymore or I can look down and I can judge the wickedness but I can see grace and salvation and I can make a way for everybody that will believe hey if God will build an ark for one man and one family that will take them through the judgment of God and carry in an ark and rise up above the judgment in the storms of life and take them to a place where they can be forgiven and given another chance bless God you and I are the Noah's in God's eyes amen 
and the ark is the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God we'll sail across the wickedness and the judgment. Amen. And God sees us forgiven. Because you got to understand when God so loved the world, it ain't about this mud ball called earth. It's about the forgiven that He sees. God sees us in the Lamb's book of life. God sees us one day walking with Him in glory. God sees our sins that have been forgiven and He doesn't see the sins anymore. God sees grace. He sees His Son's blood has been applied. And because of the blood that's been applied, you and I are now the accepted family of God. I can't for the life of me understand why anybody would turn salvation away. Amen. Do you all understand how real hell is? Amen. You want to know how close you are if you're here this morning and you're lost? How close are you to hell? One heartbeat. Yes, sir. Amen, brother. And if you think you've got plenty of time to do your own deal in this world and then God's going to back back and says, Ah, go ahead. Live it like you want to. There's plenty of time. You are one heartbeat from hell. And the very first time God ever convicts your heart and you turn Him away, He owes you nothing else. Let me preach on. That just took the wind out of the sails, didn't it? Not only this. God's desire is to save all mankind. How many believe that God didn't even give the angels a second chance? How many believe that the animals are the sacrifice? How many believe that God loves you so much Amen. that, listen to me, God saw the cross and everything that Jesus would ever endure just for the opportunity that you and I could be saved. Sometimes I just don't think it's preached clear enough. He was beaten beyond recognition. Yes. Most everybody that he either saved or healed forsook him. Do you know what that means? That means they turned their back on him. Yes, they did. And God paid the price, so all you have to do is accept him as your Lord and your Savior. Yes, amen. But the world just doesn't have time. Let me just preach on. God loves the unlovables. Amen. Amen. That He gave His only begotten Son. That means He handed, us, handed Him over to the sinners. There ain't nobody in this church that's a mom or dad to hand their kids over to the sinners. What is there? We don't even like our kids when they have done something wrong to be punished. Amen. Y'all have gotten awful quiet on me. God loves us wholly and freely, does He not? Let me just get to the end of this. That whosoever believeth in Him. Do you believe He writes His name on the soul of our heart? Each lost person is lovable by God, is he not? And you're thinking, but you don't know what I've done. I don't, but God does. But you have so convinced yourself that what you've done cannot be forgiven, but it can. And God stands at the crossroad of your life and He's got those nail-scarred hands and He's waving them. Just believe on Me. That whosoever should believe on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Because there's something about us being human 
that God's greatest desire is for us to be saved and go live with Him forever. Could salvation get any easier than it is? No. And everybody in here that's saved, are you glad you did it? Because you see, the salvation of your soul is just the beginning of it. It gets better as you go along. Amen. Let me just go ahead. I'll get through this and y'all get to go eat. God looked down before He ever created this earth and said, I've got a plan that we should not perish but have everlasting life. What does that mean? It never ends. We live beyond the grave. Now, how many in this church knows that the worst time that you'll ever go through in your life is when you say goodbye to a loved one? Yes, it is. But have you willing to think past the grave? Are you willing to think past the death and understand that there's coming a hello again? Do you understand that death ain't the end of it? Do you understand that God has a plan not only for your salvation but for your eternal life? Do you know what eternal life actually means? That means this body may die. This body goes back to the dust it was created from. But life everlasting still goes on. This body just releases you. Thank God you're going to heaven one day. And those nail-scarred hands that stretched open and said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they do. It's those same nail-scarred hands that when death releases you from down here, ain't God God's going to throw them hands up and He's going to welcome you when you go through the gates of heaven. And God said, I've got a place prepared just for you. Do you understand that the God that died for you is the God that's going to welcome you into glory one day? Amen. Amen. Yes. Let me finish. Jesus knew this. That when He formed and He breathed that breath into Adam that what He put into Adam belonged to Him forever. Do you get that? Everybody's lost, but not everybody has to perish. Would y'all come to the piano? I'm going to quit right here. This morning while they're getting a song ready, I'm going to just ask you, dear friend, just to be honest before God, would you? Would you just close your eyes and bow your head with me for a moment and say, Preacher, pray for me. I ain't coming back there. Nobody else will either. But can you just lift your hand if, you, if you're not positive you're saved? Would you just be honest before God so we can pray for you? Do you feel God speaking to your heart this morning and you know that you need to come here and be saved? Is there somebody that God has placed in your heart this morning that you know is lost? Maybe it's a neighbor, somebody your child goes to school with, and God's placed them on your heart. Would you just lift your hand and say, I, I know somebody that just needs to be saved. And you see, hands are going up all over the building. Would you be willing to come to the altar and call their name out before holy God and say, God, convict them in a way they can't turn you down? One last thing. If you're here this morning and you just can't let go of the mistakes of your past, would you just come and give them to God and say, I'm done with them? While we stand to our feet, just lift your head. This altar is open.
and to rescue you all the lost. By his blood he entered into the throne room of our God. On the mercy seat he placed it, salvation for us all. And when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. He views me in garments as white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy and he washed me this I know. Oh, the Lamb of God is worthy, and he washed me white as snow. Amen. They're one heartbeat from hell. Do you understand? We ain't God all day. That's what got me. That was, I was sleeping some off the wall. But, you know, whatever. Spider or whatever. That shit comes great to me. Yeah. And it just blows me away. Amen. That's good. Any others? Amen. God knows how to deal with everybody. Any others? Amen. And bringing him to church would be a great thing. Well, sir, I don't know how well it would work, but I saw an episode of Andy Griffith on how you handle that. <laughs> Do you have the cops pick them up, bring them out here, set them down here in the queue? I'll take care of them I want to get them here. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. Remember that. Any others? I'm going to look it up. I notice it doesn't have a propeller, so it's probably not one of those airplanes.
I don't know, but it's orange and white, so I'm liking it already. How many preachers does it take to open a plastic bag? How many plastic bags does it take to put something in? Overalls. You okay with me wearing these to preach in one day? I didn't hear anything. All right then. Thank you, church. Go balls. Amen. Now I don't know what to do. You're off my game. Huh? I ain't got time to put all them bags up. All right. Thank you, church. I appreciate it. I know you do, and I love you back. Huh? You mean for next Sunday morning or for the, or the radio broadcast? Yes, I can. All right. Okay, come on, kids, let's go. Okay. Is this not a precious sight from a church? Yeah. Come on, buddy. From a church that didn't have kids to look at this. And they just pushed me right on out of the way. All right, we ready? Now say it like you mean it. And they lifted holy hands towards heaven and they shouted, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Amen.